Okay, so we are done talking about validity. Now we need to talk about uh, another concept, and that is the concept of soundness. Uh, a sound argument is an argument that is valid with all true premises. Arguments that are invalid or that have one or more false premises are unsound. It's a slightly technical term, so again, you want to um, pay attention to how it's used. So sound arguments, one's valid with all true premises. Now, you might be able to figure out something about the conclusion of a sound argument. Every sound argument has a true conclusion, and that follows from the definition of validity, that if you have an argument with all true premises that's valid, it must have a true conclusion. So a sound argument always has a true conclusion. So, of course, this is something that we are interested in acquiring, arguments that are sound, because they will uh, provide us with a good solid basis for our conclusions. Um, now, a term that's come up again and again throughout this is the concept of truth. I mean, we talk about, um, we define validity in terms of truth. We say that one of the two things that we want to have in an argument is true premises. Define soundness in terms of truth. So truth is a very important notion. So um, I want to apply the term truth, true and its opposite, false, to statements. So premises are statements, conclusions are statements, but anything that somebody claims. So if somebody says there's a fire in the room, or if somebody says there's a party going on downstairs, that would be a, a statement. Sometimes you don't even have to say it out loud. You might even think it. You might think that um, um, Taylor Swift is your favorite pop star, and that is a statement. It's a statement that appears in your mind. So it doesn't have to be part of an argument. It doesn't have to be spoken but a statement is just a claim. Um, so here's a question, or at least an open sentence that invites a question. A statement is true if and only if. Why don't you take a couple of minutes, think about how you would fill that in. Just maybe pause the video and jot down an answer to this, something that is accurate and something that is um, perhaps helpful and informative. So here are some suggestions that people have offered in previous classes. So one idea is to say uh, a statement is true if and only if we all believe it, or a statement is true if and only if I believe it, or a statement is true if and only if most people believe it. Just think of those as statements have to do with belief, that define truth in terms of belief. There's a different kind of idea, and that is to define truth in terms of proof. So some people say, a statement is true if and only if it can be proven. A statement is true if and only if it cannot be disproven. That's a, th that's a second kind of idea. Um, here's a third kind of idea, the very last item on the list here. A statement is true if and only if it reflects reality. Or you might put it slightly differently. A statement is true if and only if things are the way the statement says they are. Um, you might ask yourself whether... Um, any uh, whether whether the answer that you wrote down fits fits one of these or comes close enough to one of these, you might have slight slight variation in the wording. Um, and if it does, then just pay attention to what I say about these different answers to this question. I think some of them are better than others. If your answer is totally different from any that I uh, mentioned and you can't think of anything wrong with it, you might send me a, a note and ask me what I think of, of the solution that you, you came up with. I do believe that these will cover most of the solutions that you came up with. So let me say a little bit about, um, let me say a little bit about these different ideas. Let's start with the, the ones that define truth in terms of belief. The statement is true if and only if we all believe it, if everyone believes it. It seems like this is clearly not correct. There are many things that are true that not everyone believes. There are seven and a half billion people in the world and there are many things that are true that not all those people believe. So, for example, you are taking Philosophy 113. Uh, if you're like me, you live in Bellingham, Washington. Most people in the world do not believe that. Not because they disbelieve it, just because they've never heard of you or me, and they don't have any reason to believe it. So, there are lots of things that can be true, even though only a tiny fraction of humans believe them. 
Um, let's consider the statement. Uh, a statement is true if and only if I believe it. Uh, who's the I? Maybe each of us will say this for ourselves. Uh, but I think you must be aware that there are many things that can be true that uh, you don't believe. And of course, there are many things that are true that I don't believe. You must have had the experience of having a belief um, that you come to learn was false. So you could have a false belief. So the fact that it's your belief doesn't make it true. Uh, and also, there are many things that you're unaware of. Right? You don't know. Um, where I was born, for example, and I don't know where you were born. So there are truths that uh, each of us do not do not believe. So to, to define truth as what I believe seems incorrect. And you can probably see that the truth is what most people believe is um, clearly incorrect, too. Um, what about defining truth in terms of proof or disproof? I think here the way to see a difficulty for these is to think about claims where uh, we can't really get proof either way. So take the claim that God exists and take the denial of that. It's not the case that God exists. Or take the claim there uh, there's an even number of hydrogen atoms in the universe. Or it's not the case that there's an even number of hydrogen atoms in the universe. Or take the claim that uh, Julius Caesar had type A positive blood. Or the claim the denial of that. It's not the case that Julius Caesar had type A positive blood. Think of these as pairs. Think of the the yes it was, no it wasn't pairs. And you realize that you can't um, you can't prove and you can't disprove uh, either of these. So if you define truth as a statement is true if and only if it can be proven, then it would turn out that it's not true that God exists and it's not true that it's not the case that God exists. It's not true that Julius Caesar had type A positive blood, and it's not true that Julius Caesar did not have type A positive blood. But that seems very odd, right? Presumably a person either does or doesn't have a particular kind of blood. Uh, presumably it's true, either true that God exists or it's true that God does not exist. Um, you get a similar problem with the claim that a statement is true if and only if it cannot be disproven. It actually becomes even worse because it turns out that it's both true that God exists and true that God does not exist, which of course would be a contradiction. So that cannot be the correct definition. So I think these examples suggest that these are not good definitions of truth. Obviously proof is a good thing, but it's not good to define truth in terms of proof. The last one on the list, the last definition on the list is the claim that a statement is true if and only if it reflects reality, or if and only if things are the way the statement says they are. I think this comes closest to being the correct definition of truth. Truth is just a matter of how things are. Um, you may have some problem with this one. One problem you might have is that you might not think it's very helpful, right? If I say it's uh, true that God exists if and only if things are the way the statement says they are. That is, if and only if God is existent or the universe has a God in it. Um, you might think, well, how, how am I going to use this to find out whether it's true or not? And I think you're right. that that's It's not very helpful in finding out whether the statement is true. But I think we need to distinguish between understanding what truth is and understanding a mechanism for telling whether a statement is true. Uh, I don't think we can expect a definition of truth to tell us in every case whether a statement is true. That would be too much to ask of it. So I'm just giving you an account of what truth is and not a mechanism for finding out whether something is true. Okay, so truth. That's enough about truth. I just want to talk about one last concept, and that is the concept of circularity. So we talked about soundness a little bit ago, and I said a sound argument is one in which the premises are true and the conclusion, excuse me, premises are true and the argument is valid. So consider this argument. Trump is president, so Trump is president. This is a, val a valid argument, because if the premise is true, the conclusion must be true. And it, all of its premises, it's just got one premise, but all those premises are, are true. So this is technically a sound argument. But it's a stupid argument, clearly a stupid argument. So what do we say about that? Well, we have to say it's sound, but it's defective, and its defectiveness is a matter of being circular. The um, argument is circular premise is identical to the conclusion or 
one of the premises. Sometimes you get other premises. So it's not quite as obvious. But um, a circular argument is one in which the conclusion is identical to one of the premises. And this is a defective argument because uh, it shouldn't teach us anything. Because either we already know the premise, in which case we already know the conclusion, or we don't know the premise, in which case uh, we can't get started. So circular arguments are ineffective arguments. They shouldn't convince anyone. So if you make a circular argument, you should go back and change it. If you see someone else make a circular argument trying to convince you of something, you should call them out on it. Okay, well that's all that I have to say about logic. Please uh, remember key concepts of argument, validity, soundness, truth, circularity, inductive, and deductive. Thank you.